The Denver Broncos have quietly flown under the radar nationally this offseason, but there are a lot of things that they've done that puts them right in the mix of the AFC West. What are those things and what impact should it have on the 2018 season? We'll break that down and more as we preview the upcoming year for the Denver Broncos. get things kicked off by taking a look at some of the top storylines heading into the season as we go into our four-minute offense. The Denver Broncos knew going into the offseason that they had to address the quarterback position and many assumed that that would be in the 2018 NFL Draft, but they chose to address it during free agency with the signing of Case Keenum. Now, he's coming over off his best season as a pro with the Minnesota Vikings, having led them to the NFC North title and to the NFC Championship game. The hope is that what we saw last season from him was not an aberration, but a sign of things to come. And judging by what we saw at this position last year for the Broncos of Keenum is at least 60% of what he was last year with Minnesota, it'll already be a win for Denver. Another position where the Broncos wanted to improve was in the backfield. They didn't bring back C.J. Anderson, instead decided to roll with both Devontae Booker and D'Angelo Henderson. Both were on the team last season. In the draft, they selected Royce Freeman in the third round out of Oregon to add to the mix. Now, Freeman was a highly productive Pac-12 running back, similar to Booker, and the expectations that one of these three guys can take the lead at the position and bring some semblance of balance to the ground game, which wasn't bad last year, but definitely has room for improvement. Last year, the Broncos finished third in the league in total defense, but 24th in points allowed. That was a key point of emphasis for the coaching staff and general manager John Elway this offseason. You can actually make a case that they did a great job in beefing up the disruption on that side of the ball with guys like Bradley Chubb, linebacker Josie Jewell, and uh, safety and linebacker Sewell Cravens, and cornerback Isaac Yadam. These are guys that do a great job of impacting the game by generating big plays, which is something that was missing a bit from this side of the ball last season. Guys that can get to the quarterback and take the ball away. So when you pair these additions up with Von Miller, Chris Harris, Bradley Roby, and others, you can expect this defense to perform much better collectively this upcoming season. And all eyes will be on second year head coach Vance Joseph this year. Some consider him a coach on the hot seat. Unfair or not, the pressure is definitely on him to quickly turn around this team and get them back into the playoffs. I personally feel as though that he was unfairly criticized last year as he's not the GM and he didn't select the quarterbacks they had last season. But this year will be a bit different as he has his guy in Case Keenum and reshuffled his staff to create a culture change. So if things don't go according to plan or expectations, then he can at least say that he did it his way. A reason for optimism for the Denver Broncos will be the threats that they have on the perimeter. What an impressive collection of pass catchers in Demarius Thomas and Emmanuel Sanders. Two 2018 draft picks in Deshaun Hamilton. Deshaun Hamilton, I'm sorry, and Cortland Sutton were arguably two of the best at their position and are very similar to both Thomas and Sanders. And at the tight end position, Jake Butt returns from injury as he was one of the top tight ends in the 2017 draft. This year, they also selected another talented tight end target in Wisconsin's Troy Fumagalli. So new quarterback Case Keenum, in my opinion, has the best set of passing targets he's thrown to in his entire career. You can also be optimistic about the pass rush. Von Miller is one of the best in the game at getting to the quarterback and now has a strong partner in crime in rookie Bradley Chubb. Also, Shaq Barrett plays an integral role in the Broncos' defense and does a solid job in not only affecting the pocket, but creating turnovers as well. And the offensive line can give you some optimism also. I think this will be one of the more improved units on a team. Health and consistency is key for an offensive line to build that continuity that you need to have success. And the Broncos have both this year and should be able to run the ball and pass protect a lot better. A cause for concern would be if last year was really an aberration for Case Keenum and he turns right back into a pumpkin. That scenario would put the Broncos back in the same position that they were last season with their collection of quarterbacks. I highly doubt that that, that is a case for Case, but definitely causes you to take a wait and see approach to the season. Same for the running game. Despite the new additions, what if the running game continues to be average? They can't have this happen in conjunction to a sputtering passing attack. The Broncos need their ground game to flourish this season, regardless of what happens with the passing game. Here are some quick takes for the Broncos as the summer rolls along. I think Jake Butt and Sua Cravens are going to be breakout stars this year. Butt suffered an ACL tear in a bowl game back in 2017 and should be ready to go this year and become the consistent receiving threat that they need at the position. Cravens fills the nickel linebacker role really well and has outstanding football IQ and is also mentally ready to make it happen this year. 
Camp surprises our quarterback Chad Kelly and defensive lineman Demarcus Walker. Kelly quickly proved to be better than Paxton Lynch during the preseason and should be a good number two option on this team. And Walker is going to be better this season in year two as he's going back to play more inside like he did at Florida State where he thrived. Rookie impact players would be Deshaun Hamilton and Bradley Chubb. I can see Hamilton becoming their slot receiver based off his skills as a route runner and have a significant role early in this offense. And Bradley Chubb will be as good as advertised for this Broncos defense, which should be much better at getting to the quarterback. And from a fantasy football perspective, I would target running back Royce Freeman. In my opinion, I think he wins out as their lead guy, putting up strong numbers for this Broncos offense as their RB1. The road to the Super Bowl for the Broncos goes as follows. The defense has to continue to be great, but also disruptive. Like I mentioned earlier, they were third in total defense, but 24th in points allowed, which is the most important statistic. They also struggle to take the ball away and sack the quarterback. Denver has to excel at both this season. Quarterback Case Keenum also has to prove that he's not a one-season wonder and provide good stability to the offense, more in particular to the pass passing game. And finally, the offensive line solidifies and finds depth which in turn will help out their run and pass game, which will allow them to sustain drives and improve on a paltry 18 points a game average last season, which was 26 in the NFL, and put their defense in more advantageous situations, which could ultimately land them in Atlanta come February. I have the Broncos finishing second in the AFC West. I like the Broncos here at number two in this division because I feel as though their defense and ability to run the ball this year will be much improved. They'll see improvement in the passing game as well, so look for them to be in the mix for that final playoff spot in the AFC. So that's it for our 2018 NFL season team preview. Be sure to follow me on all of our social media accounts. Also check out and subscribe on iTunes to Football Game Plan Podcast and to find other NFL team previews for our 2018 NFL season kickoff. Visit the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash football game plan and click that subscribe button.